I'm David Fernandez. I am currently working at Prosec uh, or Screening Eagle Technologies as product manager. And I am responsible of three products of the company. One of them is the PI, the Pundit PI 1000, which is the one uh, I'm going to talk about today. And I have also in my portfolio uh, two other devices. Uh, one is called Recipot uh, that is used for to measure the resistivity of the concrete. And then we have uh, the profometer corrosion, which is also very useful to estimate the corrosion likelihood of the concrete element. So today I want to talk about uh, Impact Echo, which is one of the applications that we are going to that we recently launched uh, since last uh, 27 of June. And uh, this, this webinar is going to be focused mainly in this uh, particular technology. So uh, I forgot to mention that uh, at the very end, we will have a round of questions. So if you want to, to have some questions, you can do it. Just press the button of a QA button that you have here in Zoom, and then I will happily respond to your question at the very end of the presentation. OK. So it's going to start with a quick introduction uh, on the market, their needs, and, and why we think this product is going to be really useful for our future clients. So we have the concrete market uh, in the civil infrastructure. And this is a very, very big or huge uh, market. As uh, so every year, uh, around 20 billion tons are, are built uh, of new concrete. So you can imagine how big is this uh, market worldwide. And it's a very important one. And then in this market, uh, I like to just to separate uh, the, the civil structure in two different parts, because you will see our device is doing two, two it has two features, two different features. So that's why I think it's important to, to differentiate. So we have the above grade uh, structure. So there we have buildings, we have airports, highways, harbors any kind of civil infrastructure you may have above the grade level. And then we have the below grade structure. So as an example, we have tunnels, we have foundations, retaining walls, metro, subway. Uh, you can imagine there are a lot of different uh, types. And another topic which is really important is that concrete in integrity inspections are vital. So you know, the concrete has a lot of defects, uh, long-term defects. Uh, that are normally visible uh, later uh, on uh, after some years of the initial construction. Uh, the most common ones are the laminations, also internal and uh, external cracks. Then you can also have uh, corrosion that normally causes also uh, the laminations, honeycombs, etc. So that's why it's so important to, to prevent these damages uh, that are going to affect the structural integrity by inspecting this infrastructure regularly, right? Uh, one of the, the main problems uh, that some uh, users may have is the estimation of the thickness uh, whenever they want to refurbish an existing building, for instance, uh, they want to know the thickness of a particular slab. So there's some uh, destructive methods, such as the one that is in the image. So you can drill a hole inside the, this concrete element, and then you can use a measuring tape to measure the, the, the total thickness of the element. But of course, this method is intrusive. Uh, you're going to need to repair the, the concrete uh, afterwards. Then it's also time consuming, and it's, it's costly. It's a costly system because you can, I mean, you can uh, affect one of the inner rebars. And just for the estimation of the integrity, uh, good, I mean, a good uh, option is to, to extract uh, concrete cores. And by visual inspection, you can see if there are some internal defects, as you can see on the image. But again, this is a, um, this is a destructive technique. And I mean, it's really accurate because you can see visually you know, the defects. But the problem is that you need, we need to repair the, the concrete, the concrete uh, voids afterwards. So that's uh, where impact echo testing uh, is a really good uh, alternative because it's a non-destructive technique and it's also fast and, and inexpensive. So this is a very good technique if you want to avoid these non-destructive te uh, techniques that I was talking before. And then on the other side, uh, as I talked before about uh, below grade uh, infrastructure, we have the foundation piles, which are normally used uh, as a foundation for big buildings. 
uh, whenever we have a soil that is not really strong. Uh, so then we normally have this shallow foundation, uh, or this, I mean, this deep foundation, uh, which is the opposite to the shallow foundation. And the main problem here is that there are three techniques that are quite uh, well known, but are expensive and they require normally advanced, advanced preparation. So we have the static load test, which is normally required to test some of the pipes that you are constructing, but it's very intrusive and you need the huge auxiliary members. And then this is similar to the dynamic load test. And uh, lastly, uh, we have the cross hold sonic lodging, which is kind of a non-destructive technique, uh, but it requires to just to place on embed, embedded tubes inside of the pile, pre or the, the casting of the pile. So you can just uh, insert these uh, cables with the sensors on it. So here again, uh, we offer this uh, another a different technology with the same sensor, which is the low strain pile integrity, which is also non it's non destructive, it's fast, inexpensive, and you don't need to to prepare to do any kind of preparation in advance. So whenever you have uh, finalized the pile after some days, uh, you can test it with our system. So let's go to the product overview. This is a quick video of Impact Echo mainly. You can see. Okay, so this is the promotional video we have on our page. Uh, and it more or less said, uh, tell you how fast is this uh, is this test, but I we will do later a, a demo with my iPad. So um, one topic I would like to talk about, this is a uh, one sensor. With just one sensor, we have two different applications. Uh, both of them are for the estimation of the concrete integrity, but on one side we have, uh, we can test piles or uh, like a foundation piles. So you can estimate the total length of the pile and also to detect internal defects. And on the other side, uh, we have uh, we can test uh, walls and slabs, so we can find the thickness. Uh, we can detect the thickness and find uh, internal defects. So the webinar today is going to focus. I'm going to focus on impact echo test. Uh, the pile integrity test is something that we already released uh, since uh, last summer, 2021, and this is the the testing to estimate the integrity of the piles. But uh, today I would like to focus more on Impact Echo, which is the new software release that was uh, released the 27th of June, about uh, one week and a half ago. And this is a new software release uh, and we have an advanced uh, hardware with a different tip, which is uh, giving us uh, even better results. So just focusing on Impact Echo test, we have the, I mean, there, there are three main elements. On one hand, we have the hardware, which is the sensor with an accelerometer inside. Then we have the three impactors, small impactors, and then we need the, an iPad to download the, the app from the Apple Store. And this is a quick uh, overview about uh, how good is this system for, for the client, because we uh, increase uh, the user experience. We make a better uh, user experience. Why? Because uh, we have real-time data acquisition. Then we also provide real-time data visualization on the iPad. And then the, the thickness of the element is automatically selected by the app. Also, uh, we, uh, we increase by three the productivity. Uh, why? Because uh, first of all, we have a dry contact test. Uh, not all devices from the competitors are like that. So we, you normally need to use a coupling uh, material, which is something that is sticky. And whenever you are moving the sensor from one spot to the next one, uh, you have to put again or just to remove again the, um, the co-plan. In our case, it's not like that uh, because we perform dry contact tests. So you don't need to use any kind of coupling agent. And also it's important to note that uh, as uh, this system is fully uh, online. So um, as you are connecting your probe via Bluetooth with the iPad, all your data is gonna be stored on the cloud. So then it's pretty easy to, to create reports and also to, to collaborate with your offsite colleagues uh, because you can share anytime the data uh, in real time. 
Then we have the we have a, a feature which is comparison uh, that allow us to just to improve uh, also the productivity, of course, uh, because we have this review mode that I will explain later, and also we have a grid mode that I will also explain later, and the best impact is automatically detected. So, um, um, what kind of elements we can test with this technology? Uh, because this is a very wide technology that can be used in many different. Uh, for many different functionalities. So we have uh, these horizontal elements and vertical elements and any kind of curve elements, you can also test them. So for the horizontal elements, I have here some examples, but you may find some others in your uh, daily work. So we have slab on grades, we can have foundation slabs, uh, any kind of flooring uh, inside the building, a bridge deck, any kind of beams. Uh, this one is for a concrete bridge, but uh, you can also test uh, beams on a on a building and concrete pavement. Uh, for the vertical elements, uh, we have the internal internal building walls. We can also have retaining walls in a highway, or or also uh, in, I mean tunnel linings. So I mean any kind of these uh, concrete elements which have a, a shape of a, a structural plate can be tested with uh, this impact echo methodology. So the preparation is really important. Uh, there is some limitations uh, of this system. Uh, the first one is that you need to test over a concrete plate. What I mean with that is that the minimum length has to be at least six times the, the thickness of the element. That means uh, that you need to test uh, this kind of slabs or walls, as I was uh, showing in the previous two to slides. And this is because if you are testing very near the boundaries, uh, very near the edges uh, or the sides of the element, you may have some boundary effects because you may get some reflection from the sides and it's sometimes it's complicated to, to understand completely the signal. So this is a recommendation, but of course there's some advanced users, impacted co-users that also test over concrete columns and concrete uh, beams. But uh, you need to be a little bit more uh, uh, advance on this technology. As I said before, uh, we perform dry contact solution, so you don't need to use any coupling agent. Uh, but in any case, the surface of the concrete has to be smooth and clean. And we are providing some stickers, uh, plastic stickers uh, that you can place over the, the sensor tip, just in case you are not getting a good signal uh, because the concrete is not completely smooth. You can always place dot, those stickers that remain on the tip uh, for very long time. And then you just uh, place them there once and you can use it as many times as you want to. So this is very quick and very convenient. And then for the measurement location, you either have to decide if you want to perform a spot uh, test or a grid test. I will explain later uh, what are the main differences. And as I said before, the best impact that you perform per spot is automatically uh, selected by the, the app. So this is also really good and really convenient uh, because you don't need to pay a lot of attention on, on the impacts you are performing. So how this work, how this impact echo technology is working, so this is uh, relying on an acoustic wave, which is also a stress wave. So that's why we need to use this hammer or impactors uh, just to make an impact on the concrete surface. And then you will see that the wave, uh, the sound wave is traveling through the concrete and then going backwards to just to, to reach the, the sensor accelerometer. And one important note is that uh, this technology relies on the impedance. So the impedance, which is a, a material property, is uh, really different the impedance of the air if you compare it with the impedance of the of the concrete, and that's why normally the air, I mean normally not always, uh, the air uh, is reflecting 100% uh, of the signal. So that's why it's a very very useful technique to detect the back wall, as this is the case, or internal voids or defects that you may have. So as we are happy in an accelerometer uh, on the bottom of the sensor, we will have this time domain graphic, which is a graphic that is not very useful for the, I mean, for, for the user, for the advanced user is useful, but if you are not very advanced, it's much easier to understand, just to go to the, to the frequency domain graphic. So what we apply is a fast Fourier transformation, which is a mathematical procedure. 
and then uh, it's easier because you just need to check uh, what is the peak, what is the peak uh, frequency peak in this graphic, and just by applying this easy formula, you you know by knowing the speed of the sound inside of the concrete, I will talk about this later, and also the frequency, you are able to detect the, the thickness of the element. Uh, this is not a formula you need to do uh, or to apply because this is something we do, we do automatically with our app. So again, this is the test principle for a concrete thickness. And then when we are testing over a big delamination, what is normally happening is that you're going to have a higher frequency. And then the thickness, of course, or the location of this delamination is smaller, right? Uh, this is not always so easy because this depends a lot. I mean, this technique is quite a, a little bit complicated at the very beginning to understand. And it's not like that all the time because it depends on how big is the is this uh, this defect or this crack. Uh, on the left side, you have the normal thickness frequency, which is called FT. Then if we have a very small uh, crack inside. What is going to happen is that no reflection is going to be done by the void. However, all the signal, the wave signal is going to travel and then it's going to go back. What is happening here is that the, the, the distance uh, that the travel ha that the wave has traveled is a little bit bigger, and that's why the frequency is smaller, so then you will see a peak shift to the left. Then if we have a little bigger uh, crack inside, we are going to have also a shift peak about, uh, that is showing the, the wave that has been able to travel uh, to the to the end of the to the back wall of the the element, but then we are also, we are also gonna see a small flow, a small flow peak, which is showing now uh, the frequency of this uh, the position of the of this crack. And for bigger uh, bigger cracks, we may have also a self resonance issue or not issue, a self resonance frequency about this delaminated part. So then we will have this uh, flexural mode at the very low frequency and we will be able to see also the frequency peak of the flow. So this is more or less, this is a very important slide. Once you understand this slide, uh, you are much more better in the interpretation of the signal. So that's why I decided to, to place it here and to explain it here. Um, then one very important topic is the calibration of the wave velocity. So um, this uh, technology is standardized on the, I mean, Impact Echo is standardized in the ASTM C1383. It's also standardized in the German, in a German guideline. So um, there are three uh, different methodologies that are uh, that are covered by this standard for the calibration of the velocity. One of them is the automatic calibration. For that, you need two transducers that have, that you need to separate to uh, to put. Uh, one uh, separate from the other around 300 millimeters. This is something we don't provide with this uh, first version of the sensor because it requires two transducers and it's much more expensive. It's almost double price. So we decided to just to provide the manual, um, the manual mode, which is also really good because uh, you only need one transducer or one probe, and then you just need to go to to one um, element. Uh, that you know the thickness, right? So just imagine you know the thickness of one particular concrete slab, then the only thing you need to do is you just input here the expected thickness of this element, let's say it's 200 millimeters. And then uh, there are two different options to calibrate. One is the is manual and the other one is automatic. So either you just, I, I will just show you later in a video, but you can scroll this velocity uh, slider until you match in the peak, you see there is a, a thickness uh, number. So you have to make it match uh, with the expected thickness, right? And the, the, this is the, let's say the more manual way to do it. But then if you don't want to do that and just you just want to know the, the SAT uh, velocity speed, number, you just press calibration button and the app will do it automatically for you. Uh, we will see it later in, in the video uh, in, in more detail. So this is again. And if you want to detect, um, this is just once you have calibrated the device and the wave of the speed, uh, the wave of the of the sound, I mean, 
uh, then you can test any spot that you want to. And then as the speed has been already calibrated, you don't need to do it again. And then anytime you are testing, you will automatically receive the thickness of the element. So imagine that you are uh, receiving all the time around 580 millimeters as this in this sample. And then in the next spot of the same uh, concrete element, you just receive a smaller um, or a bigger uh, frequency. So that means uh, there is a defect for sure in there. So then it, 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 you can do a more detailed uh, grid scan in this particular location. And then maybe afterwards, uh, you want to expose the area to see if there is uh, an inner crack or not. So uh, we have two different measure, uh, measurement modes. Uh, one of them is called the spot mode, and the other one is the grid mode. So um, for the spot mode, is really, really useful for quick uh, concrete integrity check of small areas. So you can define uh, various spots. Uh, then you can also make uh, multiple impacts per spot. You can delete any spot if you need it. Then you can also delete any impact if you need it. In some cases, you may perform a, a wrong impact, so you can always uh, delete it so you don't have any uh, fake data. And then, uh, as I said, uh, the best impact per series is automatically detected by the app, and all the calculations are done by that, are done by using this uh, particular impact. Then we provide two different buttons to arm and disarm the probe. Uh, you can either use the iPad button, or if you just you don't you want to just to use only the the sensor and just not to pay attention to the iPad, you can always use the the button on the on the sensor itself, which is really really handy and and convenient. So let me show you a video uh, about the spot mode. So then you have here the three different methods, the pile integrity, which was launched uh, last summer, and the two new MS movement uh, modes. Then I'm going to select the impact echo spot mode. And then first, as we have three impactors, you can select the impactor that you are going to use. And then you can input the expected thickness. So let's say we have a 500 millimeter uh, element. Uh, then we can start uh, just uh, making some impacts. Then you see that the that this number doesn't match with the expected thickness, so that's why you need to calibrate. Either you can press this button, the calibration button, or you can play with the velocity slider, right? So this is more or less what I'm gonna do in here in this video. So until what you have to do is to make it match, uh, to make this peak match uh, with these 500 millimeters. Okay. And for the grid mode, uh, this is more interesting when you want to scan uh, larger areas. So you can create a two-dimensional grid scan. Uh, you can always define the grid spacing. So you can define the, air, the horizontal uh, dimensions and the vertical dimensions that can be different. Or it doesn't have to be a square as it is in this example. And then once you have finalized it, you will have a thickness uh, heat map. So in this particular example, you see that our uh, thick, uh, concrete element has a thickness around 180 millimeters. So it's very likely that this area has this kind, the, any kind of defect, as we are not getting the same signal. And then we provide two different customized uh, color range. And it's the same as uh, with the spot mode. You can perform a multiple impacts per spot, and then you can delete any impact if needed or any spot if you need it. So again, I'm going to present this video. So this is a, a grid scan that I did the other day. This is already completed. So I can just go to A1, from A1 to, to C1. So I can move from one cell to the next one. Then I can see the different impacts that I have done per cell. If I just use my two fingers, I, I use two fingers swiping up in the iPad, then I will go to this visualization of the time domain and the frequency domain. And then again, here I also can play just to calibrate a little bit. So this example is a good one to see that maybe in this area, I mean, it should be around 180 millimeters. So maybe in the area that is orange, we may have some some minor problems because this we are having a a peak that is a little bit shifted, right? And I we saw before uh, when you have a, a small seat on the on the frequency peak. Uh, it's very likely you have a small, a small defects inside. 
so then we you can play always with the with the color ranges. Okay. So then uh, we have a lot of uh, additional settings uh, that are really good for not only for expert users but also for new non expert users. So we have this auto gain functionality. Uh, we transform, do, 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 we do automatically do this transformation from time domain to frequency domain. Uh, of course, as I said, no, the frequency domain is easier to understand than the time domain graphic. Uh, also, the, this frequency, uh, this peak on the frequency domain graphic is automatically detected. So then you will have automatically uh, the thickness of the element. And we have these uh, very useful high and low pass filters that are very good to eliminate the noise on the very low frequency or high frequency areas. And you have this full control of the filters that can be applied to all spots. So once you have set the filters, uh, they will be uh, they will apply to to the future spots you are testing. And finally, we have this comparison mode. Uh, so you can compare the different impacts uh, per spot. So you can neglect one of the impacts as yes, this sample is really good because we have this blue small signal on the bottom that is pretty sure this is a, an incorrect uh, or a mistaken impact. Uh, maybe I just make an impact on the sensor or whatever. So I can delete this impact, which is the number one, is the one that is highlighted. I can press in the number one, long press, and then I can delete the impact. So it's no longer there. And finally, as in other uh, Screening Eagle uh, technology apps, uh, this is uh, very similar for the reporting and the logbook. So we have different formats available for the reporting. And then we also have the instant collaboration. You can export uh, the waveforms. You can make some pictures and export them. You can also make some marks and notes and export them. And some other comments like uh, audi audible comments or written comments. And also GPS positions are gonna be safe. So you will lock, uh, allocate uh, all the testing in the sub position. So before we proceed, I would like to just to do a demo right now with my iPad. So let me share the screen one second. Uh, so now I'm gonna need like 10 seconds. Okay, one second, because I want, I'm gonna share my screen on the iPad. Okay, so it should be there, right? So this is Pundit Impact. Let's go back. So first of all, what you will see is this page, which is the front page. Then I need to connect my probe. It's this one. I have it here. So then I just turn it on. Okay. And then it's, it's, I can go here, press, and it's already connected via Bluetooth. Then I can create a new measurement, uh, a, a new file. Yeah, it's important to know that I'm gonna I'm gonna just make the impacts on my table. So the signal that I'm gonna receive is not is not a real signal that you no, will normally receive whenever you are testing a concrete element. So just I just place the sensor on the on the table. Then I make one impact. Uh, sorry, I had to press the button. Yes, now I make the impact. Second impact, third impact, impacts. It's completely real time. Then uh, I'm gonna show you later uh, like a demo file that I have that I did uh, yesterday because this signal makes no sense as I am testing over a, a good end, a good uh, table. But this is uh, just to let you just to to just to play with this so you see how fast is the, the the acquisition of the data. So then if I don't like one of the the impacts, I can delete it. Then I can create a new spot, right? So I can just Make again some impacts. Okay, so just imagine uh, this: the thickness of this element, let's say, is 300 millimeters, right? And then you see here it said is 303 cs. So then this is because the velocity is not calibrated, right? So I can move it here manually. This scroll, right? Or whether I just click calibrate. And then you see now it's 300 millimeters that match with the expected thickness, and it's telling me that this velocity is uh, 1526 1, uh, meters per second, right? This doesn't make sense because, uh, as I said, I, just, I was just testing on my table. 
but this is just for you to, to see how it works. Also, we have these high pass filters, right? And the low pass filters, so you can play with the graphic a lot. And then we have also uh, the imperial units or metric units. Uh, so um, I would say most of you are from America right now, the ones that are joining this webinar. So I can just put it on imperial units. So I have the units on inches. And then uh, I can create any comments here. I can also play with the audio comments or make a picture, right? So let's say make a picture. Okay, so this photo is gonna be there. And then you have the logbook, which is really good. It's just for traceability about what you have done uh, with this particular test. So you see, this is the location. Uh, uh, right now, I, I am in my house in Malaga, uh, Spain. And then you can see everything that I have done uh, before. So the traceability is really good. So just let me show you quickly one example, real example. So, for instance, the bridge. So this is a bridge that is nearby my house. I would like to show you some pictures so you have an idea. Okay, so this is the bridge and I was testing uh, this concrete uh, column, which is a hollow concrete column. So I was testing in the front face and in the side face of the column. So that's why I have two spots, right? So on the first spot, you can see here, that is, this is a more uh, normal graphic that you will normally see whenever you are doing in Pateco. So this is uh, around 13 uh, inches uh, thickness. So just let me go back to millimeters just in case some of you, okay. So this is a 325 millimeter, which is a normal thickness of this kind of element. And then uh, I can go to the spot two and this area is thicker, is thinner, sorry, sorry. So you see this area is around 200 millimeters. And as you see all the, the, the impacts are more or less similar. That means there is not internal defeating here. And then I want to present also a demo file of um, of a grid scan that I did. Um, this one, for instance, okay. So that one, it was a, a wall. I don't think I have a picture, but it's a retaining wall uh, in my office. And then it was uh, 250 millimeters. I was able to measure the thickness uh, because the top of the wall was visible. So you see this wall is uh, perfect. Uh, here I can select 250 millimeters and then you see everything is green, which means the the thickness of the this element is, is always the same, uh, meaning that there is no internal defect. So again, here I can select the impacts that I was doing. And then if I just swipe my fingers, my two fingers up, I can go to this uh, time domain and frequency domain graphic. So I can press any of the cells and then I can see like individually each of these cells. Okay, so let me go back to the, to the presentation. Uh, all right, so I think this has been more or less useful for you, I hope. And uh, this is a summarize. Um, so for what is this uh, technology? Uh, we have already talked about this, but I, I would like to summarize everything. So this is uh, just to estimate the concrete integrity uh, for walls and slabs. Uh, you can measure the thickness and you can locate any kind of internal defect. So you can use it uh, to detect the lamination, honeycombs, flaws, void, the bondings, cracks. And also it has been used, we have some clients using it to detect voids inside a precast dot. So this is also a technique that is applied. And the required conditions, as I said before, dry contact measurements, so no coupling agent is needed. It's normally used over with a direct contact over the concrete. But I know some people that they also use it over asphalt overlays, but it normally works better if you are testing concrete elements. And this is very useful for small areas to cover. Uh, you want to do a huge uh, scan of a bridge. Uh, we have some other uh, uh, concrete sensors in our portfolio. 
Uh, that's why I would like to present also in this slide the PD8050, which is a different sensor in our portfolio. Some of you may know it. And this is, of course, a um, more powerful tool uh, whenever you want to do a, a bigger uh, a scan uh, because it's a faster and also the visualization of the data is, is more powerful. But in any case, the PI-8000 uh, is really useful for just to check a spot and a small areas. Uh, it's a very light and quick uh, device for concrete integrity inspections. And as you saw, it's, it's really, really easy and really quick. And it's really good uh, when you have uh, areas with a lot of rebars because uh, this uh, methodology relies on the impedance, as I said before, and the impedance of the steel is similar to the impedance of the concrete. So if you have a lot of, re a lot of rebars, uh, the wave of the sun will travel through those rebars and then you will be able to detect uh, voids uh, below uh, those rebars. So this is a very useful uh, tool for that. And this are standardized uh, in the STM. So this always means that, not, I mean, it, this is standardized, it's easier you know, that you can use it uh, for a particular client because it's standardized in, this, in the STM standards. And as I said, it's, it can be used uh, for pile integrity testing. So this is a two-in-one device, which is also very, very useful. Okay. And the PD8050 on the other side, as I said, is a very useful and powerful machine uh, for bigger scan areas. Uh, the visualization is easier because it has a powerful 2D and 3D imaging, uh, which is easier to interpret if you are not a, a, a that user. And uh, we also offer in this uh, device uh, augmented reality heat map uh, to indicate these uh, weak areas. So as I said, uh, is this device, uh, PI-8000, is standardized. When we are talking about pile integrity test, we have this uh, standard, the D5852. And for impact echo te uh, technique, uh, we have uh, this German guideline and also the STM uh, C1383. Then it's gonna have a quick overview of the, on the, of the sensor. So we have this button to arm and disarm the device and the accelerometer, which is located on the bottom of the sensor. And then we have this uh, USB-C cable uh, to connect with the computer, just in case you need to update the firmware. We have the Bluetooth dongle. This is uh, relying on a uh, Bluetooth technology to connect to the iPad and the battery is a double, double A battery. And this is a rechargeable uh, battery, but you can always use uh, your own batteries here. So as I you can see in the image how small it is, if you can see me, right? So it's very small and the impactors are like that, okay? Okay, so we have uh, three impactors, as I said. The smaller one is useful when you want to check thinner elements and superficial defects because it creates a high frequency wave which has a less penetration, but much more uh, accuracy. Not accuracy, but I would say much more, um, I don't know how to say this, let's say accuracy. And for the bigger impactor, uh, it's, it, has, uh, it provides a, um, a lower frequency, which has a more penetration, uh, but it's less accurate than the smaller one. So this, the, the biggest one is, is really useful uh, if you want to test um, like a thicker element. Okay, then here we have the, the data sheet of the, um, the Pundit PI 8000. And I, mean, I don't want to go in detail in here. If you, we are gonna share this slide so you can always uh, have a look at this. But as you see, it's a very small device with two, with one, one standard AA battery. And also it's very light, it's 144 grams. So, I mean, this is a very handy device. And the data sheet of the app, which is now the version 2.0.0 uh, that you can always download it from the Apple store. And if you have an iPad, uh, we have uh, the app is, is for free. Uh, so then you have a subscription model that I will explain later, but the app you can download it and we have some demo files so you can have a look at them and play with them if you want to. 
Then uh, we have workspace, uh, which is our uh, environment uh, where we connect all, all of our sensors. So all the sensors that we have with uh, an iPad app are connected to this workspace. So this is uh, very important for cloud connectivity because all the data of your sensors are gonna be linked uh, to this workspace uh, environment. So um, you don't need to use the iPad all times. You can use your computer or your phone or whatever you want to use. You just need to log in into your screen in Eagle account and then you will see all the data. As you can see here, this is my, one example of my data. Uh, it's an old picture because the data is from February, but uh, you can see here I have all my, my files and I can see the logbook as we saw before. And then just by clicking here, then clicking more, I, I can also share this information with anybody and export the information to just to create some reports. Okay. And just to go quickly over the value proposition, even though we have already talked about most of the topics. So we offer dry contact uh, to speed up the data acquisition. This is really, really important whenever you want to do a lot of spot uh, testing. Because if you need to use this coupling agent, you will need to remove the coupling from the wall and then to place it in the next uh, spot. This is quite annoying sometimes, so that's why we decided to create our system and uh, not to need this uh, this putty or this coupling agent. And you can perform this uh, dry contact measurement uh, quite faster. Then we have the automatic selection of the best impact per area that brings you accuracy and repeatability and also the signal transformation from time domain to frequency domain again. Uh, this is uh, really useful uh, to make you understand better the data. Then the quick thickness detection also uh, with the frequency domain, dominant peak, uh, very useful uh, to do this uh, quick testing. And I think I said that before already, but uh, this grid uh, visualization is uh, completely customizable. So this is also very good for the users. And we have this thickness heat map uh, with two different color, range, color ranges uh, for facilitating the interpretation. Okay. So just as a conclusion, conclusion sorry, uh, we have uh, two applications in one device. So remember we can use this app uh, in pile integrity testing and in impact echo testing. So if you are a user that do normally or your company do normally both test, you don't need to buy two different sensors because we are the, the only product in the in the market that are that is able to perform both tests with the single with the same probe, with the same sensor, uh, with this with the same app. So this is really good uh, because it's a huge cost uh, savings and it also allows you to reduce the, the inventory. And then uh, the workflow, workflow is completely optimized uh, because you can uh, do the analysis in field, in the field or in the site, in the construction site. Um, as you, as I mean, we have a simplified entry of measurement locations, and the completion of the field work can, is much faster, uh, and you will do less errors. Um, this is uh, because you can always share uh, in real time the the data that you are collecting to your boss or to your superior or to the analyst. Uh, so maybe uh, this analyst will like to you to perform an additional uh, spot uh, testing. So then you don't need to, to go away from the construction site because the communication is really fluent. And then, I mean, this saves a lot of time and money, of course. Uh, then we have a superior software user experience. Um, because we record uh, really, uh, really fast uh, the site parameters, as you said, uh, as you uh, saw before, we have uh, this uh, real-time data visualization, and also it's very easy to to create reports. You can also create reports directly on site. And finally, versatility and comfort. Uh, which I have mentioned it like three times already, but we have this dry contact for faster data acquisition. Then we have, uh, I didn't talk about this, but the, the sensor is completely wireless. So there is no no cables at all. So you can connect the, the sensor with the iPad uh, via Bluetooth, and then you don't need to, to use any cable. So this is very, very good uh, because you can uh, perform any kind of impact echo test uh, with just one operator. So you only need one man to be on the on the site, 
and you are saving, of course, a lot of money. You don't need to to hire two people uh, to go to the to the place, to the site. And this is all that I have from my side. Uh, so now I'm gonna have a look if we have some questions. So let me go back to a second. Okay. So I see there are some questions. Um, okay, just give me one moment. I'm collecting them. So, okay, the first question is, what is the maximum penetration I can reach with this product? So that's really a good question. We had a webinar this morning and somebody asked something similar as well. So that depends a lot on the concrete quality, but I would say, and also on the, the size of the hammer uh, or the impactor that you are using. But uh, as I said, you need to use the bigger uh, impactor uh, to go deeper. Uh, you will have less resolution, but you will have uh, more penetration. But in any case, I would say a normal application would be around a maximum penetration of, of 60 to 80 centimeters. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, what is the accuracy of the product? So, okay, this is also a good question. Uh, the accuracy is around, it depends a lot also in the calibration of the speed. So if you perform a good calibration of the speed, uh, just imagine you have a two side uh, accessible element and you know the thickness of the, the element, then the calibration of the speed is gonna be perfect. The, accu the accuracy of the, the measurement is are gonna be around 2% two, uh, 2 of the thickness. So if you have, let's say 200 millimeter uh, thickness, uh, then you may have an error of four millimeter, which is really, really small. Uh, okay, okay, let's go to another question. Is it possible to detect air voids in post tensioning that? Uh, of course, it's possible. Indeed, uh, we have some clients that are performing this kind of test. Uh, I think I already mentioned in, in the webinar. So, um, as I said, um, the impedance of the of the steel is similar to the impedance of the of the concrete. That means that the signal is not uh, changed by the system of this uh, of the cable, no, of the precast cable. But whenever you are encountering or finding a, a void, uh, you are gonna see it on the frequency shift. So this is pretty pretty easy to to find. Okay, let me check if we have. Uh... Okay. Another question, can you create a cylindrical grid? <laughs> this is a good question. Uh, you cannot create a cylindrical grid right now, but uh, right now you can create either a square grid or a rectangular grid. But uh, you can play with the grid and you can jump some, some cells. So you don't need to, to perform impacts in any cells. You can just use your finger and go to a particular cell. So I would say you could do this cylindrical manually, right? But we will have a look at that. Maybe in a future release, we can, we can implement that. Another question. Uh, can data from PI be exported to inspect? Uh, so this is uh, on the roadmap. Uh, it's not uh, available right now, I would say. But of course, I, I would say most of the screen nickel technologies uh, sensor are gonna go to inspect. So for sure, we will have it soon. Uh, can I test uh, with PI uh, those and other materials such as ceramic or wood? Well, so this technology is mainly used for, uh, for I would say for uh, concrete. Uh, I know that there are some people using it uh, in asphalt, asphalt uh, layers. Uh, then also uh, you have a look at the Impact Echo book, which is a really, really good book. You will see that this is also a technology that can be used in CMU uh, walls. Uh, I have never done a test like that myself, but uh, it said that it can be used. Uh, then it depends, uh, we never do a test in wood. Uh, I would say it could work. You will need to, of course, to, uh, to just to calibrate the speed, which I assume is different than than the concrete, but this is something I I cannot I I, I don't know. Another question is um, 
Okay, uh, this is a good question. Uh, the yearly fee, I, I assume he's talking about subscription fee, is on top of the integrity test fee. No, no, no. So this uh, fee uh, that I was talking, the 1,200 uh, Swiss francs, is for both applications. So uh, whenever you are paying for this subscription, so you will be able to, to use uh, the complete app. So you have three measure measurement modes. You have pile integrity mode, then you have impact echo mode, uh, impact echo spot mode, and impact echo grid mode. So this is for the same price, uh, you have the, the two applications, right? Two applications in one. Uh, okay, so another question, this is a good one. Uh, 60 to 80 centimeters in impact echo mode uh, for a slab testing, a set for pile measurement mode is much deeper. So that's correct, and this is a different, uh, even though we are using the same sensor, uh, we are using completely different frequencies. That's why we are using the small impactors for, for the impact echo mode, and we are using the big impactors for, for I mean, the, the big hammer for the for the pile integrity method. So with the, with the big impactor uh, for the pile integrity method, we are uh, having a very low frequency wave, which is much more able to penetrate really, really deep. Uh, but as I said, the, the accuracy uh, is less. So uh, for impact echo, uh, the frequency, I mean, uh, the recommended frequency is, is, is higher, and that's why you need to use smaller impactors. You can always try to use a bigger impactor just to try to expand or to extend this limitation of 80 centimeters. But I would say most of the occasions, maximum penetration you're gonna reach is one meter. Okay. Okay, another question. Uh, this is a good one. Can you also test a dry contact for pile integrity test? Uh, you can always try. Uh, you can always try to do that, but I would then uh, suggest to do it because you normally, uh, whenever you have a, a concrete pile, the top of the pile, the head of the pile is normally, it's not smooth, it's really, I mean, it's normally destroyed. No, the concrete is not really gr grinded. So that's why you, you need to use putty. That is this uh, piece of like a sticky material uh, that we also include with our uh, kit. And in these particular cases for pile integrity, I will always recommend to use uh, this, the, this, this sticky material. You're gonna have a much better signal. And in this particular case, you don't need to go to, from one point to the next one. Uh, I mean, you will go from one pile to the next pile, but it's not, you're not gonna perform as many impacts at with pi, uh, with impact echo test. Uh, yes, another question. Can I use the PI 8002 test for rigid concrete pavement? Uh, that's correct. Uh, as you are testing concrete, I mean this is one of the one of the applications that we, we can cover with a uh, PI. And I think this are all the questions that I have. I was just double checking. Okay, so we are on time and I was able to respond all the questions. I'm happy <laughs> for that. So um, yes, I do really appreciate that uh, all of you have joined the, the webinar and if you have some additional doubts, uh, you can always contact uh, me or Screening Eagle Technologies. Uh, so I do really appreciate that you have joined and have a good day, uh, goodbye.